Welcome everyone to part two, where today we're going to be going more in depth about routes. So if you can remember in the previous video, what I mentioned is a route, the basically the three main properties that you need. So each route takes an object and the three main keys that you need are method, which would be get, put, etc., and path, which is the path that the user will type into the URL and the handler, which is how basically your server responds to the user's request. And so before I get into any more detail about this, um, I should go over request and H. So basically in this video, we're going to be focusing on request more so, but they can, because they are parameters, they can be named anything. So they can just be REQ or even H can just be soccer or something like that. But just with happy, that is just by default what you usually call them. But so the request object um, is an object with details about the user's request. So it can house parameters, authentication information, and more like that. And H is a response toolkit, which basically you can do things such as redirect the user to another page. And I'll show you all more about this later. But so let's create another route. So we would do server.route. And once again, we have to pass an object. And we'll do the method. Once again, we're going to be using get. And the path, we're just going to do, for this, let's do users. And then for a handler, or then for our handler, let's do request h. And then what we'll return this time is, let's just do another um, hello user, just like this. And so now if the user goes, or let me fix this. So now if the user goes to the page dash users, they will be um, shown the hello user. So let me show you with, let's start this up again. So nodemon server.js. And now let's go to our web browser. It's still loaded and let's do dash users. So now you can see we have hello user, which of course is being displayed here. And now something you can also do is you can add um, parameters. So let's say we have a user page like this and we want to actually get the page of a specific user. What you would do is you type the, the parameter in between curly braces and then you can access it by doing instead of hello user, let's actually just get rid of this, use the syntax and say hello, hello. And then like this, and it will be request.params.user. So what will happen is if you type in users and dash put in a certain parameter here, it will be given to the, it'll be in the request object in the params and you can access it by the name user here. And so now of course, let's save the file. So save it, you can see nodemon is restarting the changes. And now if we actually go to our page and say we do users-tom, you can see it says hello Tom. And so I did not do H1 tags, so let me just put that in to make it better, make it bigger, more visible. So you can see, save again, no mom restarts changes. Let's go back, refresh the page, hello Tom. And then you can change it to anything else like hello uh, wit code. There we go, and it works like this. And so this is accessed by dot user because the name in here is user. So if we type this to, I don't know, say, um, soccer like this and we do request.params.user save this and go back we will get undefined because what it is now looking for is dot soccer like this so then restart the changes go back and it's working again so the what whatever you put in here is what gets accessed however an error with this is now if we go to just users like this we will get a 404 error and this is because this parameter that we are specifying here is mandatory right now. And the way to make it not mandatory is you just add a question mark like this. So now if we refresh this page, it'll just say hello because we have not supplied anything for the request.params.soccer. Where if again we say dash Tom, <clears throat> now it says hello Tom again. And so a cool thing you could do with this is you could check if there is a request parameter object for soccer. So we could do if request.params.soccer. So basically if that exists, then return this. Just like that. And else, so this will mean that there is no request parameter for soccer. We could return just say hello stranger. So then if we reload this again we can see hello Tom. Now if we get rid of this, hello stranger. And once again, I forgot to put that in H1 tags, but you get the general idea.
And now another thing we can get with the request object are query parameters. And what query parameters are are what you put in the URL. So for example, you have question mark name equals Tom. So here name is a query parameter. And then if you want to add another one, you would just do the ampersand and then you would say, let's say last name equals wit code. So then last name would be another query parameter. And the way to access these in Happy is by using the request object. Specifically, instead of request.parameters, you use request.query and then the name of the parameter in here. So last name or name. So let me show you an example. So we can do, let's just return another h1. And we will return, always find it hard to find that, request dot query dot name and so then when we return if we type into the URL just a get rid of this last name part this part right here you can see we have the name Tom right here and then another thing we can do so if we wanted to add multiple we could do dot name and then let's also do last name which would be request dot query because we're going to query parameter dot last name so now if we go in, if we just do this, we shouldn't get an error. It'll just be Tom. The other one will be blank because we don't have to handle that for request parameters. But then we'll do last name equals wit code. And this is the one that's again isn't showing up because I believe I forgot to save the page. So if I just do save, have the server restart, and then refresh this, we can see Tom wit code. And so now something I want to show you is to something you can do with H or the response toolkit. And something that's very useful you can do with it is you can redirect the user. So say the user goes to a page that for some reason you want to redirect them. Maybe you want to redirect them to a download or something like that. What you would do is H dot redirect and to wherever you want to redirect them to. So right now let's get rid of this and let's just say if they go to the users page, then that means we should just redirect them to here. So instead of doing anything on the users page, they'll be sent hello world. So let's save this and go here, let's delete this and then go to users and you can see we're sent back to hello world. So there's a lot you can do with the response toolkit. We'll be getting um, more into that later on in this tutorial series, but for now, this is just a cool method you can do with it. Um, and then there's one last thing that I want to go over in this tutorial series, and it is um, how to handle 404 errors, or if someone goes, you know, if someone goes to a web page that you don't actually have. And so you, if you did do that, say, let's just leave this as is. Let's just go to some random page. Let's say dash soccer. So you can see we get a status code 404 not found. That's not a really friendly message to send to the user. And so of course, what you would want to do instead is we should add a wildcard. So let's add another server dot route right here. Of course, it takes an object. The method will be get the path. And so for the path, this is the important part. What we are usually what you do is you do any and you use the wildcard symbol. So this wildcard is actually any path, anything that matches root and beyond and isn't found will be thrown a wildcard or will be taken to this page. So then let's do handler request an H again. And then, so we can say, we can just return, let's just give a nice friendly message of say, it's a common one. Oh no, you must be lost. Just something like this. So now if the user goes to this page again, so dash soccer, they'll just to send, oh no, you must be lost. And then let's say you go dash soccer dash um, football. Oh no, you must be lost. So cool. But then if they go to a page that we do have, for example, the home page, it's hello world. Another one, if they go to dash users, then it will, we're still redirecting to hello world. So this is working as well. And then this looks kind of messy in the fact that we have declared, declared server.route three times. And a good thing you can do with this is instead of doing server.route, you can add them as an array. So we can do an array of objects like this and then we can just organize this up by do a comma here. We need to re-indent, but then you can just take this code, say cut it out, paste it in here, and get rid of this. And then we can do that with the same, the other route we made here, the wildcard route. Let's do that, add a comma, and paste it in again. And then a cool, or we have an error here, probably do with extra commas cool and so I just had to save the file so I've saved it and you can see we have them all here 
in a nice a list like this. And a cool thing, a cool shortcut actually in Visual Studio is if you press Control A, K, and then F, it'll realign everything so everything is perfectly aligned. And great. So that's what I'm going to be showing you. That's what I've shown you in this video. And so in the next video, what we're going to be going over is how to handle, we've only been using get for the method. And also what we want to be able to deal with is post data or form data. So in the next video, we're going to be handling a form, an HTML, a simple HTML form, and we're going to be handling, like, handling that data on our server here. So I'll see you in the next video.